Hello, everyone. Welcome. I wanted to share with you an interview that I did with an old friend of mine, Dr. Elaine Schulte. Um, as you know, we're hosting a, a COVID vaccine clinic this week on campus, and I thought it might be nice to talk with somebody who can speak a little bit about uh, what we know about vaccines in kids. And so uh, Dr. Schulte is currently the Vice Chair of Academic Affairs and Faculty Development um, at Montfiore, the Children's Hospital at Montfiore. Uh, she's also the medical director of their adoption program. I met Elaine several years ago when she was a parent and trustee at Lawrence School in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, which is also a school for kids who learn differently. At the time, she was the chair of general pediatrics at the, at the Cleveland Clinic. So she's a, a real expert when it comes to kids and families. Uh, she also has a background in public health. So she was, I thought, a perfect person to sit and talk and just ask her some questions. And um, certainly we would always advise you to speak to your specific pediatrician about uh, questions about your child, but we thought it might be helpful to have some general insights into what we know about kids and vaccines. All right, Dr. Schulte, thank you for joining us today to talk to our school community. I, I, you were the first person I thought of because of your work with kids and your work with faculty um, and parents. And um, when we decided to have this vaccine clinic on campus, I, I thought, you know, as a parent myself, you're a parent, you know, that it would be great if we could just have some, you know, a talk story session with somebody who really is following this closely. So thanks so much for being here. Yeah, well, thanks so much for inviting me. You know, I care a lot about kids. I care a lot about schools. And here in New York, we've seen lots and lots and lots of activity around COVID and vaccination and kids. So happy to talk with you. Thanks. So let's get a couple of questions. I figure Let's start with the biggest question, which is, you know, we know the FDA approved this new vaccine. We know um, the CDC Advisory Council endorsed it in sort of the American Academy of Pediatrics. But as parents, obviously, we want to make sure this is safe for our kids. So what should we know to make us feel confident that this is safe for um, a big chunk of kids? So thanks for that question. That is a question that's on top of mind, I think, for all parents. This happened unexpectedly, it happened very quickly, and these recommendations came out in seems like just a very, very short time compared to what we are typically comfortable with. So of course, we're nervous and a little anxious and might have some questions. What we know is that this vaccine is 100% effective and we have the experience of it, the vaccine being trialed in many, 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 many adults, and now several thousand children. So we know that it's safe and we can feel confident that it's safe. And that's why all these guiding bodies and organizations that look very carefully at the scientific data, that's why they say it's okay to go ahead and administer. Right. Yeah, I was, I was, I was reading something the other day where somebody was saying, you know, yes, this happened fast, but it was based off of years worth of work, and you know, probably no vaccine has ever been as scrutinized as, as this one because literally the whole world is watching. Right. That that's absolutely right. And you know, there are teams and teams of teams of physicians and scientists and people who have dedicated their entire life's work to studying this type of vaccine and the way the vaccine works. So we have to feel confident that the decisions are correct, that it's okay to administer. So um, I think we I think we know that that kids often get milder symptoms. If they do contract COVID, they often get milder symptoms. And so I know some of the the equation in some parents' head is, well, you know, because they're less impacted physically, you know, what's the benefit of getting the vaccine? And I, you know, so much of the vaccine and just COVID in general, the communication has been about what gets taken away from us. So what, what do we gain? I mean, what, what would be the, the pros for, for kids getting um, vaccinated? So you're right, Ryan, that kids typically don't get as sick or are often what we say is asymptomatic. They don't have any symptoms, but not every kid is asymptomatic. We know that thousands and thousands of children have been hospitalized with COVID and several hundred kids have died of COVID. And it's not easy to predict who's going to get sick and who's not. So while it's less likely that kids are going to get sick from COVID, it's not necessarily a guarantee that they won't. So that's, I guess, where I start with vaccine. 
we don't know who's going to get sick. So if we can pre uh, prevent a disease, then then let's do it. Yeah, no, that makes you're right. That makes good sense. And um, you were mentioning earlier how the the vaccine appears to have 100 percent efficacy. And so, you know, so that's obviously protecting us, but it's also protecting loved ones. You know, I think we, we're, we're starting to learn a lot more about the transmissibility of it as well. Correct. Absolutely. And I know that many, many kids want to be reconnected with their grandparents, their extended family members, their buddies, their <laughs> schools, their teachers. And we don't want them to spread any COVID virus to anybody. So if we can keep them from getting sick, then it's less, much less likely that they'll be able to share or spread the virus with their loved ones. How about some nitty gritty details that I, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about? So um, the kids dosage and the timing of that, is that the same as the adults and, and same thing with side effects? I mean, are, are we, is, yeah, I would, I'll just leave it at that. What about timing and side effects and, and dosage? Yeah, so uh, children get a slightly smaller dosage, but they get the dosage that's appropriate for their size. And again, they, the scientists have studied this. So they measure their antibody response and they know the dose that's appropriate for children. Um, the side effects are similar. Probably the most common side effect that we hear is pain uh, at the injection site. And that's very similar to the side effects uh, kids get from the flu vaccine, let's say. So they get a sore arm for a couple of days. Um, they can develop a low grade fever. They can develop Flu-like symptoms, again, similar to the flu vaccine. They you know, just don't feel so hot and maybe a little achy. And a lot of kids um, will also report some symptoms of fatigue. And again, these are all side effects that are reported by adults. Hmm. Okay, so nothing, nothing unique to little guys. Nothing unique to little ones, no. Um, I know I've talked to some parents, um, and I think, yeah, I think understandably we all have a high threshold for our own kids, you know, who were vaccinated themselves, but aren't so sure about um, getting their child vaccinated. Do you, I know every situation is different, but do you have any general thoughts or insights into uh, what you might say to somebody who's, you know, kind of wrestling with that, that question in their head? Yeah, you know, we see adults who wrestle with getting themselves vaccinated, but they want their kids vaccinated. Oh, so, we, we, so we see that too. And I, I guess, you know, for parents, who vaccinated themselves, but they're a little more reluctant around vaccinating their children. I just always ask what their fear is, what they're worried about. And usually the comment is that this just happened so fast. And my response is it did happen so fast. And again, as I said earlier, we've got hundreds of physicians and scientists who know a lot about vaccine and a lot about this type of vaccine. And I trust them. And yeah. You know, typically, if a, the physician says this is okay, then usually parents, you know, come around a little bit. It, I agreed. It's scary. It's new. We've lived in this world of uncertainty. And here's one more thing that we feel uncertain about. Um, my kids got vaccinated immediately, as did I, as soon as we were eligible. Yeah, um, me too. Me too. I was really lucky that we were able to do that. Um, you work right now in the Bronx. And so you guys sort of saw this earlier than most of the rest of the country did. And so I'm, I'm assuming you were, uh, you were also getting the questions before the rest of us were getting um, questions. So uh, do you have any, um, is there anything about vaccines that you're getting asked a lot about um, that, you, that you see are myths or misperceptions or misinformation that you really wanna debunk? Sure, that's a great question. And I think the most common um, question or misunderstanding about this vaccine has to do with the way it works. Many people understand that traditional vaccines have some component of the actual disease in the vaccine. And that's how the body makes immune response. They see a little bit of the chickenpox virus. And so the body makes antibodies and they attack it. Um, and you don't get sick, and then your body creates memory. So when it does see chickenpox, it has the antibodies ready to fight it. This vaccine has no parts or pieces of that scary spike protein, right. funky looking virus that we all know what it looks like. It uses a different technology. Um, and I should also mention, some people are confused about the technology. They think it's um, it, you know, it's an mRNA Robert Nancy 
uh, Arthur. It's not a <laughs> DNA. I'll, I'll uh, maybe speak in some uh, language that your parents and kids can understand. D, David, N, Nancy, R, or A, uh, Arthur. It's not a DNA vaccine. So it's not going to change the genetic makeup of who you are. You're not going to become some other person. Um, right. And you're also not going to get COVID-19 from getting the vaccine. Right. And, you know, there always is that possibility, little possibility that when you get the flu vaccine, you get a little, little piece of the influenza, influenza virus uh, in, in your system and can, um, you know, feel kind of ucky. But that's not why, why you feel ucky or tired um, from getting the COVID vaccine. No, oh, thanks for sharing. That's a great, um, a great explanation because I've, I've heard that myself from people who are a little bit weary They're, they like you said they don't maybe fully understand the science behind it and, and what it's doing internally um this is sort of a little bit it's related to the vaccines but since i have you I'll, I'll ask you um do you have any insights into when we may be starting to hear news about vaccines for kids 12 uh, under 12 years old i know that there's been some news about you know that they're working on that next age group um you have any thoughts on that when we might start seeing it for our our our, ele our youngest elementary kids? Boy, I, I wish I had some facts around that. You know, people keep saying the fall. Yeah. Um, so I they they are running trials right now, and as soon as they can get the data, I'm sure that they will release the vaccine and they will low they will lower the age limit. Well, thanks, Dr. Schulte. I really appreciate you sharing all of this manao with us. We really appreciate. Um, you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us here in Hawaii. Um, anything I didn't ask you about vaccines that you want to share? Any kind of parting thoughts that you want to share with our parents? Yeah, I just uh, say to all parents, you want your kids to get back to their normal lives as soon as they possibly can. And at, when they are vaccinated and they have two doses and it's two weeks after that second dose, you can feel very, very confident that they are protected and they can start to return to their normal lives. So summer camp, sports activities, family vacations, play dates with their friends, all those things that they've missed um, can now come back into your life and hopefully help everybody have a happy and healthy summer. Well, thanks. On, on behalf of myself, but also assets, we really appreciate you taking time to um, chat with us today. And thanks for all the good work that you do for um, well, all kids in your area in the Bronx and, and also for kids who learn differently. You've been an advocate and a champion for many years. So thank you for the many, many hats that you wear. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye.